Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. I first want to acknowledge that we're on the unceded traditional ter territory of the Hoopacheset and Sashat people. I want to thank all of you for taking time to come today. You know what this election's about. It's about picking a party that's in it for everybody. That's right. That's right. Knocking on doors in Courtney, Alberni, I've been hearing that folks have had enough of liberal and conservative governments that are always making life easier for the, the wealthy and the well-connected, for the big corporations. Meanwhile, everyday people are feeling squeezed. We see that here in our communities. They're feeling taken for granted. But here in Courtney, Alberni, they're also telling me they're really inspired right now. They're feeling hopeful because they've seen our leader. And they're seeing our leader. They've seen him take on the rich and the powerful. They've heard him talking about things that matter the most. Friends, I'm inspired too. I really am. I think you know that. And I know you are. So I want you to join me in welcoming the leader of the New Democratic Party of Canada, Jagmeet Singh. Everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I just want to say I am so honored to be able to call Gord my friend. Uh, to have Gord on the team means the world to us as New Democrats. And please give it up to our incredible candidate, Gord Johns. <laughs> Friends, we, we're only where we are today because of all your love and support. So thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out in such a passionate and powerful way. I want to thank the drummers for that beautiful, really special moment. One of the most special moments on this campaign has been uh, being drummed in by, by them. Can we just give them some? That was really beautiful. Uh, friends, just a little bit about Gord. You know Gord is someone who's a champion for you, who's going to fight for you, someone who's fought and, and will continue to fight for coastal jobs, for working people, and for the environment. Yeah, Gord! That's right. That's right. Gord was also, not surprisingly, recently endorsed by the hereditary chiefs of the Neutral Nath Nations, the 14 nations, and it's a hallmark to his commitment to reconciliation. <laughs> and friends, in this election, we've seen the choices. We've seen what Mr. Trudeau has done over the past number of years. He's made it clear that his priority is not the people that need help, not these young people that are worried about the future. His priority has been helping out the big polluters, yeah. buying a pipeline, <laughs> subsidizing oil and gas industries in the billions of dollars. <laughs> Mr. Trudeau doesn't help out families who can't afford medication. He helps protect the profits of pharmaceutical and insurance companies. And we know that conservatives aren't going to be any better, right? Conservatives are going to do what they always do. They cut services. They're going to tell you they're going to cut taxes, and they might cut taxes. It's mostly going to help the richest, the people at the very top. But it might put a couple of dollars into people's pockets. But what else are they going to cut? They're going to cut the services that you need. They cut health care. We've seen what they do when they get into government. They cut education funding. They cut health care funding. They actually make it cost more for families. They'll talk about saving you a couple of dollars on one side, but they'll cost you a lot more in the long run. And so they're not the option for us. Now, Mr. Trudeau is going to tell you that you don't have a choice in this election, that you have to vote out of fear. He's going to tell you you can only vote for Mr. Trudeau. You can only vote for the Liberals. The Conservatives are going to tell you, though, you have to vote for Conservatives. I want to tell you that they don't own your vote. They don't own your vote. You own your vote. You can choose in this election to have someone that's going to fight for you, that someone's going to stand up for you. And in this election, I want to be clear. I'm running to be your prime minister because I want to make a difference in the lives of Canadians. But this election isn't about me. It's about all of you. So no matter what Canadians choose, I want to ensure the Canadians win on October 21st. And to make sure, and to make sure the Canadians win, 
we're going to put forward these we put forward these commitments these priorities that we're going to fight for. When you elect new Democrats across this country, you're going to get someone that's on your side that's going to fight for you, for health care, to make sure that if you need medication in this country, if you're a senior or your, your loved one needs health care or you yourself needs health care and you need medication, that you use your health care, you use your health card, not your credit card, to get the medication you need. <laughs> we're going to make sure that families... We're going to make sure that families that need dental care don't have to make the difficult choice between whether they get it and then are able to afford the groceries or not. We're going to make sure that 4.3 million Canadians, those who earn 70000 or less, immediately have access to a national dental care program. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to fight hard to make sure that those cell phone and internet companies that are ripping you off right now, and I know you feel it because we're paying... We're paying the highest rates in the world. And the reason is Mr. Trudeau has been unwilling to take them on. He's not been willing to take on the telecom companies. He's not been willing to take on the big pharma. We're going to take on the big telecom and make sure that your cell phone and internet rates are affordable. We're going to put our price cap and mandate mandatory unlimited data plans. We know, we know that so many people are worried about housing. Housing is a crisis across this country. Here on the island, I know people are worried. We are, we're going to commit to you that we're going to tackle the housing crisis by building half a million new affordable homes, tackling speculation and money laundering in a concrete way. We are committed to making sure people can find a place to call home. That's right. Thank you. We're also going to do something that the conservatives and liberals aren't willing to do. We're going to take on the biggest polluters. We're going to cancel oil and gas subsidies and invest our, our money into renewable energy. We're going to protect our coastline. We're going to fight for the environment. We're going to tell young people who are worried about the future that they can count on us to fight with everything we have, to fight the climate crisis like we want to win. And to pay for all our plans, let's be really clear, we're not afraid to say this, to play, pay for our plans, we are going to do something that liberals won't do, the conservatives won't do. We're going to ask the very richest Canadians, those at the very, very top, to pay their fair share. Donc, mes amis, dans cette élection, on a un choix. Les libéraux vont dire que non, vous pouvez voter pour eux, mais c'est clair qu'ils ne méritent plus votre vote. Ils ont déçu la population. Ils ont brimé, brisé des promesses. Ils ne sont pas les op option progressiste. Et dans cette élection, vous avez un choix parce que euh, si vous voulez voter progressiste, c'est nous, les néo-démocrates, qui vont lutter pour rendre la vie plus abordable, pour s'attaquer à la crise climatique et pour s'assurer que les plus riches payent leur juste part. C'est nous, les néo-démocrates. So my friends, while Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Scheer choose to help out the wealthiest, they choose to help out the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance lobbyists and big polluters, Mr. Scheer and Trudeau have made their choice. They've chosen those at the top. I choose you. Thank you very much. We're going to take some questions from the media. Thanks so much for being here. This is amazing. This is such a great thing. Let's go right to the questions. Okay. Oh, sorry, right over here. Robin Gale, Global National News. Oh, Week. sorry. Sorry. One, my apologies, Robin. Just before you begin, uh, I wanted to say one thing. I, I said something yesterday that, that I, I feel really bad about. Uh, I, I believe that we need to build a country where we, we welcome everybody, we respect everybody, and, and I feel bad about what I said. So I want to make it clear that uh, what I meant to say yesterday is that uh, conservatives cut services, and that's hurtful, and that's wrong. Uh, but we've got to respect everybody. Difference of opinions are fine. We're going to have difference of opinions. And I want to make it clear, my whole campaign, uh, our whole movement has been about making sure people feel welcome, that they feel accepted, and uh, people should be accepted no matter what their political views are. Okay. Um, J'ai dit quelque chose que c'était troublant pour moi, et, et je veux dire que notre campagne, notre mouvement était une, un, un mouvement, une campagne d'accueil, de, de de bienvenue et ce que j'ai voulu dire que les, les coupures des conservateurs me rend triste et fait mal à la société mais vous pouvez avoir n'importe quelle vue euh, n'importe quelle opinion avis politique il faut euh, que vous pouvez exprimer vos opinions 
et euh, on, on veut créer un climat respectueux pour tout le monde. Global News has just uncovered that if someone is wanted for deportation and evades detection for long enough, the CBSA will cancel the arrest warrant. If you form government, will you order the CBSA to stop this practice, or would you consider amnesty for these undocumented citizens? Well, we know that uh, people expect our immigration system to have integrity, and this is showing that our system doesn't have integrity. We need to make sure that the processes are followed appropriately and that uh, all steps are followed through with. On a less serious note, yes. uh, your TikTok is going viral. Um, <laughs> how do you think this political gimmick is working for you? Well, well you know what? Uh, what's powerful about what we did is it was a clear contrast. It showed what we're for and we're, what we're not for. And I wanted folks to know where we stand. And it's a powerful tool to communicate with people. I believe you've got to connect with people where they are. And that means making sure you use every tool available to connect with people, particularly young people. They're a powerful force. They can change the world. And I want to engage them. And I know that they want to be engaged. There's some young people in this room right now. And I know they've got lots of power and lots of passion. And you can change the world. And I want to. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I, I wanted to be able to connect with them and show, you know, in that, in that video we talked about, you know, what I'm for, who we're in it for as a team. We're in it for people, not for powerful corporations. We want to fight against big polluters and protect the environment. So I, I think it was a cool way to, to be able to share that. Thank you. Christian Noël de Radio Canada. Thanks. Monsieur Scheer, ce matin, dans l'Est, a dit qu'une coalition libérale néo-démocrate, ou une entente entre vous, euh, ferait que la TPS augmenterait à nouveau jusqu'à 7 D'abord, un, est-ce que vous êtes prêt à dire que vous n'allez jamais augmenter la TPS pour payer vos promesses? Et deuxièmement, est-ce que Monsieur Scheer a menti? Oui, il a menti. C'est complètement faux. Euh, on n'a jamais parlé de ça. Ce n'est pas dans aucune euh, de nos engagements. Donc, c'est faux. Absolument faux. Euh, parce, et je pense qu'il a peur. Peut-être qu'il va penser de faire ça parce qu'on était clair. On veut s'assurer que le plus riche paye le juste part. On, veut, on a proposé un impôt, une taxe sur les ultra-riches, quelque chose que Scheer ne va jamais faire. Donc, ça, c'est le contraste entre nous et les conservateurs et les libéraux, en fait. On est prêt de dire comment on veut augmenter les revenus. C'est de s'assurer que le plus riche paye le juste part. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Trudeau is just making stuff up because he's getting desperate. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That might be true as well, but let me be clear. Mr. Shear is just making stuff up because he's getting desperate. And uh, <laughs> we, we absolutely will not. Uh, raise the GST, no, not, what, not whatsoever, because it's not a progressive tax. What we are going to do is make sure that the richest pay their fair share. We made it very clear. We made it clear we are proposing a super wealth tax. That's a tax on those who've got fortunes of over 20 million. Pretty sure that's no one in this room. But even if it is, we're going to tax you a little bit more. <laughs> if, you are, if you have a fortune of over $20 million, yes, we're going to make them uh, contribute more to society. Those at the very, very, very top, not the top even 1%, the top 0.1%, those 2,000 families that have massive wealth, we can actually raise as much as $70 billion with this measure alone. It's a powerful measure to tackle the inequality in our society, and we're proud of that. We are not going to do what Mr. Shear's uh, talking about. We're going to do what we're talking about, which is making those at the very top contribute more to society. Yeah. Yeah. Et, um, si on compare uh, la façon dont les choses se déroulent entre le Québec et la Colombie-Britannique, par exemple, au Québec, c'est un peu plus difficile qu'en Colombie-Britannique pour le NPD, on dirait. Première question, pourquoi? Deuxièmement, quelle importance ça risque d'avoir quand viendra le temps de former un gouvernement minoritaire le 21 au soir? Donc, euh, ce qu'on a vu, en fait, c'est euh, de momentum à travers le pays. On, on a eu un euh, rassemblement des gens à Montréal avec plein de monde. C'était incroyable l'énergie parce que les gens se trouvent en nous, un parti et une équipe qui se bat pour eux, qui propose des solutions concrètes pour défendre l'environnement, pour s'assurer que le plus riche paie le juste part et pour euh, rendre la vie plus abordable avec les services comme les investissements dans les soins de santé et dentaires. 
Différence. Euh, mais tout le, le, le Canada est différent. Le, le Québec est une nation unique. Euh, je suis tellement fier d'être euh, maintenant quelqu'un citoyen de la Colombie-Britannique. Donc, euh, il y a toujours des différences euh, à travers le pays. Mais en fait, ce que je trouve, il y a plusieurs enjeux où nous rassemble, où nous nous rassemble. Et en particulier, en Colombie-Britannique et au Québec, il y a une sensibilité pour l'environnement qui est tellement forte. Uh, il y a aussi un besoin d'avoir plus des services comme des services de santé. Donc, uh, je pense qu'il y a plus de choses qui nous rassemblent. Hi, Mr. Singh, Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News. Uh, hi. Uh, I want to follow up on the Mr. Scheer question and a lot of the things that you have heard him say, you say are not true. What do you think of these scare tactics and are you concerned at this point that people are going to believe those scare tactics? Uh, I don't think so. I think people are seeing that Mr. Tr Mr. Scheer has said things Uh, again and again that aren't just aren't true are patently just made up we've never anywhere in any of our announcements ever suggested any vague way that we would be increasing gst that's wrong that's not true we have said very clearly what we will do we are going to put in a super wealth tax that's going to make sure that there's a one percent on those families that have more than 20 million dollars in fortunes that's what we've been talking about and i think people can can tell from the repeated desperate attempts to misinform Canadians that Mr. Mr. Scheer is getting desperate and that he's trying to make up things to scare people because our message of hope is working. People are wanting to vote out of hope. They want to vote for something, not against something. And I think he's afraid that people are going to vote with their hearts and that's going to mean a new democratic government. That's going to mean a brighter future. That's going to mean fighters for people. something about what Lisa Raitt, uh, Conservative MP, said on The Current this morning. She actually said that the party uh, that wins... No, that's not it. <laughs> no. no, no, no. She said that uh, that the NDP government, she, if they won a minority, that they could work with the NDP on a bill-by-bill -bill basis. Mm. Um, Lisa Raitt, I've got to give her some credit. She's a very uh, kind person. I've, I've worked with her before. I think she's... Uh, you know, someone that's uh, gained a lot of respect in Parliament. Uh, but I made it really clear, New Democrats are not going to work with Conservatives. Uh, what they do, well, what... Uh, our concern is, and, and why I want to make it really clear that I'm, I've made it very clear I'm not willing to work with Conservatives, is that they put out their, their platform. And their platform is exactly what we expected. Massive cuts to things like public transit, massive cuts to health care and to services, They're going to hurt families, and, and I can't support that. And while Ms. May has made it, made it uh, said very clearly that the Green Party is open to working with the Conservatives, I'm not. And that's when I've, I've drawn the line there. Yeah, so really, I, I want Canadians to know that, you know, the values that we speak to are that we're not going to support uh, a Conservative minority government. We're not going to support in any way Mr. Scheer being put into the Prime Minister's seat. That's something that we've ruled out entirely, unequivocally. Uh, Ms. May hasn't done that, and that's one of the big differences, because we don't think you can negotiate with a woman's right to choose, with uh, same-sex marriage, with uh, services. Merci. <laughs> Uh, donc, uh, uh, ce qu'on qu a déjà dit, mais je, je suis fier de le répéter, uh, on a dit qu'on ne peut pas travailler avec les gouvernements conservateurs parce qu'ils ont déjà prom promis de couper les services, ils vont couper les investissements dans l'infrastructure dans publique pour le transport en commun. Donc, uh, au lieu de Mme May qui a laissé la porte ouverte pour travailler avec M. Scheer pour le placer dans la siège de premier ministre, j'ai dit clairement, je suis contre ça. Je ne veux jamais appuyer un gouvernement conservateur d'être le gouvernement du Canada. Euh, moi, je veux toujours défendre les gens et j'exige je, les gens de voter néo-démocrate si vous voulez avoir des alliés, des champions, des gens qui vont travailler pour vous. C'est nous, les néo-démocrates. Hi, Mr. Singh, Janice Hi. Dixon, Global Mail. I just want to follow up on Hannah's question. Is there anything at all, you know, if the Conservatives were to say, um, we'll work with you on, on your cell phone bill commitment, is, I know you don't want to negotiate the future, you've said that before, but is there any circumstances where you could find agreement? Well, I think this is a really crucial time period right now. We're just a couple of days from the election. And, and I want Canadians to know exactly where I stand. And I've said it really clearly. Uh, 
Uh, I know that Mr. Trudeau has let people down, and so you know, I've made it clear, I believe New Democrats are going to deliver what people need. And with conservatives, they cut services, they cut the things that people need, and so I will not in any way support a conservative government. And I made those things very clear. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm curious, I know, you know Mr. Shear made these comments um, about the GST tax this morning. Um, on the flip side, the Conservatives have also been praising your campaign. Lisa Raitt this morning or, or last night complimented you on your TikTok video. What do you make of their sort of, um, you know, the other side, the encouragement of, of your momentum? Well, uh, and the video was a good video, so I think she's just acknowledging. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was pretty cool. Um, and, and I want to make sure it's clear why it was cool, though. It wasn't just cool because it was whatever. It was actually the message. And what we talk about in that video is just a really simple way of saying who we're going to fight for. We're going to fight for the environment and the planet and young people's future. And we're not going to... And, and we're not going to we're not going to subsidize oil and gas. We're not going to help out the biggest polluters. We're going to make sure people get a home. We're not going to uh, cozy up to the speculations and the speculators that, that are driving up the cost of housing. So I think it was just a powerful way to make the contrast really clear who we're in it for, who we're fighting for. It's people and who Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Shear are fighting for. It's powerful corporations. That's the difference. And that's why people need us. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm Mr. Singh, Kevin hey. Gallagher, CTV National News. Hey, um, so Andrew Scheer has said in his platform that the conservatives would not cut health care transfers. So when you say they cut health care, I'd like to know what you're talking about. Well, well they talk a lot about uh, finding efficiencies, and we've heard Mr. Ford in Ontario say the exact same thing. I'm not going to cut health care. I'm just going to find efficiencies. And what Mr. Ford did is cut health care. He also cut education. He cut funding to kids with autism. So when conservatives say they're going to find efficiencies and find savings, we know what that means. That means they're going to cut the services that people need. And Mr. Scheer is very close to Mr. Ford and very similar in conservative values. And those values are very much not our values. Though their values are to cut services, and that's what they do. They don't say it clearly. They say it in a bit of code. When they say finding efficiencies, it means cutting services. <laughs> And just to follow up, it does seem today that you're, set, you're drawing a fairly clear line in the sand about how an NDP uh, MPs would uh, handle a conservative minority. Uh, late yesterday, Lisa Laflam asked you on CTV National News if you would topple a conservative minority government on their first bill, which would be to cut the carbon tax. Canadians want to know if they're going to have to go back to the polls months after we decide what the next government could be on October 21st. And I think that they deserve a clearer answer from you today, sir. Well, I want Canadians to know exactly what they're going to get. And, and so I want them to know the New Democrats, we fight conservatives and we win. In ridings where people are worried about conservatives winning, like here in this riding, here with Gord Johns, Gord Johns is going to be conservative. So if you vote for Gord, you beat conservatives. <laughs> we love Gord. Uh, so people should know that New Democrats aren't going to work with uh, putting in a conservative government. We're not going to do that. What they should know is, though, the liberals have let you down. And the more New Democrats you vote for in this election, if you vote for enough of, enough of us, we're going to form government. But if you vote for enough of us, either way, we're going to fight for the priorities we put forward. And whatever we can do to make sure people have more affordable lives, housing, health care, tackling the climate crisis, and true reconciliation, we are going to do these things, making sure that the richest pay their fair share. That's who you get with the New Democrat. Well, they should just know, folks you know across Canada, that New Democrats are going to fight for them. And that they don't have to choose between liberals and conservatives. If you get new Democrats, we're going to deliver real action and fight hard for you and all the things that you, you need in your lives. Liberals have let you down. Conservatives are going to cut services. You don't have to choose between the two. You got us. We're going to fight for you. Bonjour, Monsieur Singh, François Cormier de TVA. Qui devrait, avoir, qui devrait être le premier à avoir la chance de former le gouvernement? Est-ce que c'est la personne qui a obtenu le plus grand nombre de sièges ou c'est le premier ministre sortant s'il est capable de bâtir une coalition? Qui doit être le premier à, à former le gouvernement? Donc, comme j'ai dit, je ne veux pas tomber trop dans les détails de ce qui va passer le 21 octobre. Il y a des traditions, il y a des, des choses qu'on fait euh, 
traditionnellement. Mais ce que je veux souligner, c'est si vous voulez quelqu'un qui va se battre pour vous, si vous voulez quelqu'un qui va s'attaquer à la crise climatique, comment on veut gagner, si vous vous assurez que les plus riches payent le juste part, c'est nous, les néo-démocrates, qui vont livrer la marchandise. Vous dites quand même que vous ne bâtirez pas, vous n'appuierez pas à un éventuel gouvernement conservateur. Vous dénoncez les libéraux, mais vous ne dites pas la même chose des libéraux. Donc, vous seriez prêt à collaborer avec un gouvernement minoritaire libéral. Oui, j'ai seulement euh, dit une chose, que je ne suis pas prêt de travailler avec les conservateurs, mais je suis ouvert à travailler avec les autres. Je suis ouvert à avancer nos priorités euh, en travaillant ensemble. Mais j'ai seulement dit qu'il y a un parti avec lequel je ne vais pas travailler, ça c'est les conservateurs. Alex Ballingall, Toronto Star. Would you make the cancellation of the Trans Mountain Pipeline a condition of your support for a liberal minority that you're open to supporting? Yeah, so this is something that I've been really clear on. I am fully opposed to the Trans Mountain. I've been opposed to it. I will continue to be opposed to it. Our commitment on one of our priorities was the environment, and that's a crucial part of our commitment to reducing our emissions, to stopping the Trans Mountain Pipeline, to ending fossil fuel subsidies. So this is something we're going to continue to fight for. Absolutely. Last question. I just want to make sure I understand. You wouldn't, if, if the pipeline, if they want to push it through, you would, you would pull your support out of a liberal minority. Yeah, we've been fighting the pipeline before. We're going to continue to fight it. We're always going to fight it. Uh, we, on est contre le pipeline Trans Mountain. On était contre ça. On va continuer de combattre le pipeline. On est contre ça. Et nos valeurs, c'est clair, on est contre ça, euh, on va continuer d'être contre ça, et ça n'aligne pas avec nos priorités, on a livré nos priorités, ça n'était pas euh, aligné avec nos priorités, donc on pas de tout, c'est quelque chose qu'on va toujours combattre. Yep. Uh, hello, Mr. Singh, Theresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Uh, your, uh, a lot of the uh, issues revolving around this, uh, this election has been uh, affordability, that's what we've heard from voters. Uh, your platform calls for a $15 uh, minimum wage. Do you, do you think that's a living wage, or should it be higher? Well, what we've committed to is that we would immediately raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, but we also know that that's not enough to make it living. And so our commitment is this. Over the mandate of a new democratic government, we would take the $15 minimum wage that we implement immediately and then consult with groups to develop a living wage, because people should be able to live with dignity while they're working any job in this country. And that's what we're pro. No, that's my point. So not at all. That's why uh, $15 is a starting point. There's been a 15 in fairness movement that's been calling for that. We would do that immediately. But then what we would do right away, a part of our commitment in our commitment document that we released months ago, is that we would take the $15 minimum wage and raise it to a living wage uh, during the mandate of a new democratic government because we know it needs to be living. Thank you very much. Thank you.